Our takeaway has been a different saying each week. Our takeaway this week is, I will believe in God and tell others about Him. Can we say that together? I will believe in God and tell others about Him. So we're not just called to believe in God for ourselves. Like, like I just want to believe Christmas is a wonderful time, but I want to keep Christmas and my belief all to myself. Should we just be about receiving gifts at Christmas? Oh, no. Yeah. We should also be about giving gifts. So if our belief in God is just about ourselves, just getting God for ourselves, it's, that's kind of a selfish thing, right? We need to be about also giving God. And if we want to do that after, during the game, Elizabeth, we can do that um, after I do the video. So we can, we can get everybody's points after the lesson or during the game. I will make sure you get all your points. So this week, we are um, on our third week of our series, Believe. And next week will be our final, our final lesson on that. But next week, you have to watch it in your home, maybe on your sofa, in your PJs, or in your hot cocoa. We're not coming to church next week. We're giving everybody a break, a day off after Christmas, because you're going to be so exhausted from all that unwrapping and cooking and all that amazing stuff, right? Yeah. It's going to be Hannah's birthday. Hannah, Paul, what are you going to do? You have to remind us that, okay? So next week we won't be in service, but we will please watch it online because this patio will be finishing up our belief series. And when you come back January 3rd, I think it's going to be a pajama party. Whoa, whoa. And I think we're going to have the prize winner for our gift, which reminds me of going to grab my gift. See who won this amazing gift that we have. We don't know what's in it. Miss Patty does. She knows what's in it. You will get to win this gift. Your belief ticket. You'll get to ride the Polar Express, pass, go, collect $200. No, I'm just kidding. You don't get to collect $200. But you know what? This Patty actually has something special for everyone. So if you don't win this, you will get something. So remember, you get a point for coming to church. You get a point for bringing your Bible and for bringing the guest. So Miss Bella and Miss Elizabeth will be writing y'all down today how many points you get. That means that that's okay. You're here. That's important, Rosalie. So you'll get your name in for that many times, and then she'll pull a name out the hat. Everybody's got a chance if you came to church. So. At each campus? Well, at each box, so they all stay the same. So the one person will win this. One person in each campus. One person here in this kids' walk will win this. Everybody else will get a smaller gift, but it is also significant and awesome too. So, all right. So, are you ready for the best part of the Christmas story? Yeah. Yes, I am too. This is it. Mary and Joseph were visited by angels, and they knew that Jesus was coming soon. But guess what? There was a glitch in the story. If I say glitch. The glitch is, all of a sudden, they were commanded to leave their country where, where, where they lived and go pay taxes in a different city, which is where Joseph was from. So they had to travel to a city named Bethlehem. Can you say Bethlehem? Bethlehem. All right. So back then, do you think they hopped in their minivan and drove and hit Chick-fil-A on the way? No. No. They had to walk or ride, whether they had a camel, a donkey, a horse, something like that. They did not just hop in the car, start it, and go. It was going to be a long journey. And Mary was already pregnant. She was pretty pregnant at this point. She's like eight months pregnant. And she has to get on the back of a donkey and ride for days to another town. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But... I think all that bouncing around that donkey really elevated her labor. And even though she was almost due, it might have progressed it to the point where the baby was like, I really cannot stay in this tummy anymore. <laughs> so when they get to Bethlehem, she's exhausted. Joseph's exhausted. And they go to check in at the hotel, right? There's not many hotels. There's an inn where you could rent a room and stay. It was full. You know why it was full? Everybody was there to pay their taxes. So, apparently they arrived a little late. Crabby and Mary slowed them down because that belly was hurting. There's a bit of stop for water, let her rest, you know. So as they get there, and the inn is full. But they feel sorry for her because they can tell she's like super primo, 
down, she's tired, she's going to need somewhere to rest. So they offer her to stay in the stable, which is where the horses and the sheep and the cows stayed at night. Well, the sheep kind of went into the field, but there probably were a few in there. And it was where they kept, um, you know, maybe their farming tools and things like that. It was basically like a fancy shed. Anybody have a shed or a garage in their house, right? The only good thing about it was there was hay in there that could keep them warm. Um, but it was pretty much, you know, just like a shed. Um, so basically, they had to stay not in a super nice place, but they had somewhere to stay. And you know why I believe, and I know a lot of people believe this, why did God not just hold the spot for his own son in the hotel? Why did he say, like, to the innkeeper, let these people in, make room for them? Do you know why? Because God wanted to come humble. He didn't want to come in like, da 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 da, I'm arrived. He wanted to come as a humble person, a person that was willing to get dirty, a person that was willing to be belittled, a person that didn't have pride and arrogance and thought they were so great. Jesus came as a little baby, needing help, needing to be taken care of. And as he grew up, he did not want others to think too highly of themselves. He always called people out about their attitude, about judging others or thinking that they were better than they were. Because he, as God, knew that we are all created equal. We are all equal. So Jesus wanted to come as a humble baby. We're going to read out of the book of Luke, chapter 2. If you brought your Bible, you can turn there. It's going to be verse 6 through 7. And this is what it says. Luke is in the New Testament. So it's towards the back of the Bible. And it is the third book of the New Testament. So the New Testament starts off like this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call those the Gospels. Not Luke. Well, over here. But, uh, Luke as in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But some of you guys have Bible names. Some of you have the name Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John from the Word of God. So that's pretty cool. All right, so Luke chapter 2, and this is what it says. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, which is an animal child that they got. Because there was no lodging for him. That night Jesus was born. This was the most exciting thing to happen because all of Israel had been waiting for a Savior, a Messiah, a King. To deliver them. But here's the deal. Guess what? They thought he was going to deliver them from Rome. From, from worldly oppression. From a, from a, from a kingdom that, that was on the earth. But Jesus didn't come to deliver them from Rome. He came to deliver them from the, the bondage and chains of something else. Something greater. Does anybody know what he came to deliver us from? It's a, it's a, it's a short little teeny word. Charlotte, do you know it? Hell, that is actually part of the deal. Do you know? Sin. Jesus came to deliver us from sin, from the bondage of sin. And no matter who reigns over us as a king or a president or, or, or a boss at work or anything like that, no matter what happens in this earthly life, Jesus came to deliver us from the bondage of sin so that we wouldn't have to be subject to sin. That when we sin, we can be forgiven. We can repent and be washed and move forward and not held under that slavery. Because sometimes when we do something wrong, we just feel so bad for so long. And Jesus came to say, all you have to do is say, I don't want to do this anymore. And it's done. I'm sorry. He came to forgive us, to set us free from that. We're going to go on to Luke 2, verse 8 through 14 and read what happened. Those that had to believe that night. Let's look at that. Chapter 2, verse 8. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. I guess so. I would have been too. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, 
riding in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of other angels, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying all together, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Can you imagine being a shepherd that night? No. Shepherds are just out watching their sheep. They're protecting their sheep from the wolves and, and danger because at night is when the predators come out, right? So they're out there. They're thinking, all they're thinking is a wolf or a bear to come. They're not expecting an angel of God to come out of the sky. Not just one angel. Instead, a host of angels, like the sky filled with angels. Instead, an army of heaven. And they began to sing all together, glory to God. God. It was probably almost just a deafening sound. Like it was probably so amazing that their hearts almost stopped. Have you ever been scared to the point that like you thought you were going to pass out? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you were on a roller. Maybe on a roller coaster, or maybe you really weren't expecting this, or your brother or sister jumped out of the dryer or something. You literally thought, "I'm going to die." Yeah. Like that scared. And the angels had to tell the shepherds, "Don't be afraid," because your initial reaction is. I am super scared right now. Like, almost pee myself scared. Like, that would freak me out. Yes, Rosalina. I'm on a really big roller coaster that it goes up and it goes through the tummy. Wow. Did, it, did, you, did your tummy feel scared afterwards? No. No? My mom was like this. Wow. Mine fell like sideways. My shoes fell off. Oh, my goodness. So, Rosalina was on the swings and she said her shoes fell off, but she wasn't scared. But sometimes after we get off of a roller coaster or something, our tummies are so like, woo, we're like terrified. But they were so scared, the angels said, don't be afraid. And then, do you think they believed after the angels appeared to them? Yes. They believed and they went to see that which had been told to them. Here we go. It says, later in the chapter, it says, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. And they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby in Bethlehem. And it was exactly like the angel had told them. What do you think they did next? After they found, they believed? That they found what they've been told to believe? What do you think they did next? Tried the went in the stable? Tried to find the stable. Well, they did. They went and found the stable. So they did. They, they followed through with what they believed. It says they were excited they were so excited that the Bible said they told no one. They went and told no one. Do you think that's what happened? No. They kept it to themselves? No. It says they went and told everyone, praising God, that he had sent the Savior to them. The shepherds were so blessed to get a message from God, they couldn't keep it to themselves. Does anybody remember our takeaway today? I will believe in God and tell others about him. At Christmas time, remember we talked, we are not just excited to get at Christmas. We should be just as excited to give. Who here has helped make some cookies or pies or fudge or something this year already? Okay, a few of you guys, all right. Isn't it fun to give those things, whether you have just a friend over and you're like, hey, we made some cookies. Or maybe your neighbor is an older person and you take them some fudge or something. It's so awesome to give. Isn't it fun to watch your mom or your dad or your brother or sister open a present that you know about and they don't know about? And it's a surprise. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to get it. Just open it. Oh, wait. Just open it. I'm so excited. Isn't that cool? Isn't that fun? So that's how we should be about knowing Jesus. Right, Rosalina? We should be so excited that God has revealed himself to us that we should go and tell everyone. Do you have a question, Rosalina? I have a question. Do you know if my mom and my brother's Christmas? Oh, very good. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. I like that. Thank you for being a good helper. So the point is, is we should be so excited for what God has done for us. We want to tell others. It'd be kind of rude and mean for us to keep something so amazing to ourselves. Sometimes we're scared to tell others. Maybe we think they might think 
we're weird if we say, you know, God loves you and he sent Jesus. Maybe we might think somebody would laugh at us or tease us. But you know what? The shepherds didn't care. They wanted everyone to know that God had come to save them. But I will say the shepherds, at least the shepherds did get to see angels, and that's pretty amazing. Who here has seen an angel? Not many, right? But here's the deal. Angels are angels, but angels are all around us. They are all around us. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spirits. So there's, there's demonic spirits around us that are trying to make us angry or unhappy or frustrated, but there's also angels all around us that are, the Bible says he sends forth his angels to bring forth his word, that he sends forth his angels to encourage us. The Bible says they will, they will lift us up so we don't hit our foot against a rock. That's actually in the book of Psalms. So there are angels around us. We can't see them, but here's what you can see. You guys want to know what you can see? You can see Jesus in others. When someone comes to you and says, hey, I see you're having a bad day. Can I pray with you? You're seeing Jesus right there. It's the love of Jesus pouring out of them. When someone comes to you and says, hey, I saw that, that person teasing you, and I want you to know that I'm for you, and, and, and you're a great person. You don't have to listen to what they say. That's Jesus being seen in others. When somebody comes to you and says, hey, do you need some food? We've got some food. We've got some extra food. That's Jesus showing himself through his children. We are the children of God. If you believe that God created the earth and he sent his son Jesus to live, to die on the cross, to be buried, resurrected, and now he lives and reigns for us. If you believe that, you have been adopted into the family of God. God created all of us. We're all children of God. But we are not all part of God's family because if we don't believe on him, if we don't look to him, he wants us to, though. And he wants you to tell others about him. He doesn't want you to keep the presence all to yourself. He doesn't want you to keep the goodness all to yourself. He wants you to share the love of God. God made everyone equal. He loves everyone equally. And we should share the love of God to all that we come across. Everyone needs to know that God loves them. He created them. Do you believe that? We are going to watch a video. Thank you. We got a video, Mr. Jason. And then we're going to pray. And we're going to pray together. And then we're going to um, end with a fun game. But let's watch this video. The story of Christmas. Jesus and the Shepherds. This is Jesus. <laughs> 